here's where we left off, okay? We were talking about what the genetic code is. <clears throat> At the beginning, I tried to give you the bigger concept of the reason for what seems like a really complicated system is actually that life needed to solve some problems. Life needed to be able to make many, many copies of this um, set of blueprints for how to build you without making any mistake. And so that was one of the problems that needed to be solved, how to, how to copy everything without making mistakes with great fidelity. Then it needed a system that would allow little machines called enzymes to catch and correct mistakes that get made. And the third thing that needed to happen is if there was a mistake that happened that didn't get caught, this system that was developed <clears throat> minimizes the penalty for having made a mistake. So keep those things in mind. <clears throat> so we have gotten to the point of knowing that there are four different types of nucleotides. Um, for DNA, it's G, A, T, and C. Why? Because those four things are very different from each other. So if I've got the rule of match the black with the right and the red with the yellow, it's easy to do. I can do it fast. I never make a mistake. Okay. But the challenge with that is there are four nucleotides, but there are 20 amino acids. So what uh, this system does is it needs to use three nucleotides in a row, kind of like a three-letter code word for each one of the amino acids. Well, what is this? Usually at this point, I'll ask you if um, we look alike, because this is my baby. This is the protein that I discovered. See, there's my name. Okay, so what are we looking at? First of all, I'd like to point out, look at this, G's, A's, T's, and C's. Do you see all that? A, 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 G, T, G, 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 G. See, that's why that movie got called Gattaca, because what kind of a word are you going to make out of lots of G's and A's and T's and C's? That's the DNA for my protein. If I look inside of your cells and I look for this little instruction manual, this is the instructions for how to build, how your body could build the protein that I discovered, okay? Then what are these other letters, the ones that are farther apart? Each single letter here represents an amino acid. Don't worry about them. You don't even know, need to know their names. You certainly don't need to know their abbreviations, all right? But um, let me get out a pen here, okay? But you see this one right here, this is a, oops, sorry. This is a valine. And you see how the valine is right below the letters G, T, G? That's because G, T, G, that is the unique codon for valine. Unique, wait a second, here's a valine, and this one says G, T, C. G, T, C is also a code word for valine. There are 20 amino acids that we need code words for, right? And by putting if I've got four nucleotides, G, A, T, and C, and I put them together three at a time, I can make 64 different codons, 64 codons. So I could use GTG, I could use GTC, I could use AAA, I could use ATC. Stop me, okay? So, um, so if humans, would have put together this kind of a system and we never would have figured it out. But if we would have put this system together by, um, by committee, right, then what we would have done is we would have said, um, okay, all of the, uh, all of the, each individual amino acid will get three codons, right? That seems fair. There are there are 20 different codons, I'm sorry, 20 amino acids, 64 codons. Each amino acid gets three, and then I got four left over. I'll use one to say start, and I'm gonna use a couple to say stop, that's gonna be it, okay? But that's not what life did. What life did was it said, you know, out of all of these amino acids, some of them are very important. If I make a mistake in those, it'll really be a problem. So there are some amino acids 
I'm going to abbreviate that, that have five or six codons, not fair. They've got twice their fair share. Why? We're going to get to that in a moment. Okay. So remember, this is like two part molds. Now, DNA has got two big jobs. Remember that DNA, it stores information for how to make proteins. Write that down. DNA's the reason that you've got it is it stores information for how to make proteins. You make the right proteins, you get a living cell, and you get a living you, okay? Now, that DNA, in order to do what it needs to do, it needs to be able to do two different things. One thing it needs to be able to do is called replication. Replication happens whenever the cell needs to divide. Um, when you first started out in life, you were a single cell. You had DNA, half of it came from your mom, half of it came from your dad, and you were a single cell big. You didn't stay one cell big for very long. Pretty quickly, you were two cells and then four cells and then eight cells, right? How, how did that happen? Well, the first thing that had to happen is that first cell had to say, okay, I will make a copy of all of the DNA so that when I divide, boom, both of the daughter cells will have exactly the same DNA I started out with. And then when they want to divide, they need to copy their DNA before they can boom, divide and now make four cells. Copying all of the DNA right before it's time for the cell to divide is called DNA replication, DNA replication. And you start out with DNA and you end up with twice as much DNA. And then the cell divides and becomes two cells and each cell's got its own DNA. So how does that happen? Is that on the next slide? Okay, you need to know this, that first of all, the DNA needs to be unwound. This double helix thing needs to be unwound by an enzyme called topoisomerase. Enzymes. Enzymes are machines. I've got a whole lecture on enzymes and you've got a whole lab on enzymes. Enzymes are machines that take things apart, put things together, move things around. Enzymes, their names end in the letters A, S, E. And topoisomerase unwinds little bits of DNA. What's next? This enzyme helicase, helicase is going to break the hydrogen bonds. So my DNA was wound up like this. Someone had to unwind it. That was topoisomerase. Now helicase is going to split it apart. And now I've got naked GATC, blah, 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 on both sides. Okay, now what? You don't need to know as much detail for this class as you do in some classes. I want you to focus on DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is the enzyme that builds new strands of DNA, okay? So the DNA polymerase, the DNA polymerase right here, it is busy looking at this particular is busy looking at this particular strand of DNA right here. And it says, oh, that is a, uh, a G. I'm going to put a C over here. Oh, that is an A. I'm going to put a T over here. Oh, there's another A. I'm going to put another T over here. And so you can see this guy has just been marching his way down the strand and he's building a new strand that is complementary to the first strand. So we started off with two strands, right? We'll just call it a left strand and a right strand, okay? The left strand is having a new right strand put on, and the right strand is having a new left strand put on. Now what's going to happen? These new strands, that's going to go to one cell, that's going to go to the other cell. So after DNA replication happens, each cell that gets the DNA they get one old strand with a new one that's been built to match it and, and vice versa, right? 
so there gets to be a copy of DNA, but the way it happened is here's your DNA and it's going to get copied. So it gets pulled apart by the, the helicase, right? And then this strand gets a perfect strand and that one goes off to that cell. And then this strand gets a perfect strand and that goes off to that cell. So each of what we call the daughter cells of a cell division ends up with one of mom's strands and one brand new one. And for that reason, we call DNA replication uh, semi-conservative. Semi-conservative. Oh, I miss whiteboards so much. All right. Okay, so let's see. I have got an animation here. Let's see if I can make it run. Oh, it's gone. Well, that's disappointing. Hang on. Here we go. I'll see if I can run it from here. Eleven seconds. Okay, so this is going to be a movie about DNA replication. Lots and lots of stuff is happening. All right. Don't worry. When it comes to the exam, you're not going to have to be able to identify it. All right. But let's look here. Ooh, what's going on? So pretty. See this stuff in green? That stuff in green, that is topoisomerase. Its job is to make sure that um, the DNA doesn't get overwound. And then do you see this machine? Brrr, see how it's spinning? Brrr, okay. That, that spinning machine is busy um, separating out the two strands of DNA. So it's very difficult to see. So this guy is sending one strand over here and sending one strand over there. Now, the reason why there are two different things going on in the two different strands um, uh, is beyond the scope of this course. And mostly I'm just showing this to you to emphasize how all of this stuff that's going on in your cells that's being done by molecules, it is all just like machines are doing it, right? So... Um, that is DNA replication. Now, I told you that DNA has got two big jobs to do. The second job is called transcription, and we will start there at the beginning of the next lecture.